So I'm a sort of curator project manager and I work all over the region really and nationally occasionally too. And uh, I don't sort of actively seek out projects in Coventry but this was one on my doorstep quite literally. Um, I live around the corner and um, I walk past this building a lot. Um, it's a restored medieval weaver's house mm. and because it's run by um, a trust of a, volu a voluntary trust um, it's not open that much and it's a beautiful building and really you know sort of a, a really unusual aspect of Coventry's history there's a lot of um, uh, reference to other industries in Coventry but rarely is there much about um, the weaving history particularly the medieval one I um as you say, I'm a weaver, and I've been doing it for nearly 12 years now. I started in 2000, just weaving as a side project during my bachelor's degree studying industrial design. But you see your progress at each step of what you're doing, and I found such satisfaction in it personally and in using what I made in my own life, that it was something that I wanted to find out how to share with people um, outside of the small circle of artisans um, that I knew. So I actually took the large floor loom that I was using, a lot like this one that I'm sitting in front of, and put it on wheels, took it out on the streets of San Francisco, and would just weave in the parks on the street corners and talk to people about what I was doing, why it was special to me, and I found that it was also a great way to learn from other people about their connections, and it was almost like a research project for me, doing this in public as a way of attracting people and hearing their personal connections to the cloth and the process. But one thing that I found was people would see this complicated construction and think that it was the only way of making cloth, and think, okay, well, that's all well and good for you. You have the time and the space for this complicated piece of machinery, and you've trained to use it, but uh, that doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, or, like, this was my imagination, that they were kind of disappointed that I had presented them with this fabulous, life-changing thing that I had, but there wasn't really any way for me to transfer it to their lives without them training and making space in their homes and their lives for this big tool. So, um, so it, that sort of process and empowering others to do that, mm -hmm. it, 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 do you have any sort of um, thoughts on the idea that that's actually about sort of demystifying the, the artistic process and this idea of the artist as sort of being, you know, um, filled with the muse and, you know, being, having certain skills, particularly nowadays where mm -hmm. perhaps we sort of artists are held separately from uh, utilitarian work yeah. as well? Absolutely. I'm, I mean, what I wanted to work with was this idea that I could initiate things that people could then work with and work into their lives in the way that was appropriate, yeah. and not think of me as some person who was doing stuff that was very special or different from what anyone else does, but just somebody who's looking at things in a different way, presenting that perspective, and letting them consider it in the way that suited them best.